It's Adam with webstarts.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create an online jewelry store using webstarts. But before I get into the video, I want to invite you to tap the subscribe button and also ring the notification bell. That way you'll be the first to find out when I release a new video on web design, internet marketing, search engine optimization, and similar topics. All right, to get started, we're going to need a few things. I've gone to webstarts.com. That's where I'll be signing up for an account in order to create this e-commerce enabled website or online store. All right, the other thing that you're going to need is good high quality photographs of the products that you want to sell. And you should probably have a good idea of the packaging you're going to use in order to ship those products to your customers after they place an order and then maybe the weight of the products so you know how much to charge for shipping. All right, let's begin just by logging into a WebStarts account or by signing up and creating a new one. All right, I'm gonna sign up for a new account. So at webstarts.com, I click on get started, it's free. In the second step, I'm going to choose a design for my website. I can choose from any of the designs available. All of the designs are 100% customizable and can be changed at any time. So it doesn't really matter so much which design I select because they can be changed later. You can search through the designs either by category. For example, you have here business, you have online store photography. If you want a design that already has an online store integrated, I suggest you select online store. And then if you're building a jewelry website, you could select the jewelry and accessories uh, category or subcategory as well. And that just helps you find a design that's laid out a little bit more specifically for uh, that industry. Once you're ready, you can select that. Then you're just gonna enter in the typical information that you would need in order to uh, create an account online. So for example, I'm gonna enter in an email address. I'm gonna select a password that I'll be using and then I click sign up. Now, when you're signing up for a Web Starts account, you will be required to verify your phone number through an SMS text message. So be sure to enter your phone number in here and then enter the code that appears on your phone. I'm going to do that and then meet you back on the other side where we select a domain name or web address for the store we're creating. Okay, I've verified in my account by entering the code that appeared on my phone after generating the verification text message. It's time for me to choose a website address for my online store. I can choose from one of two options here. I can choose a free dot webstarts.com domain name, just like right here, or I can enter my very own top level domain name. So that would be something like whatever the name of my store is, dot com, dot org, dot net. If you select the option to use a top level domain name, you will have to first upgrade to a paid plan before you can have that domain name resolved to your website. So I'm going to keep it free for now. So I'm just going to enter in a free webstarts.com domain name. Also, you can just choose this later if you want to skip this step. Let's say, for example, you're having a hard time. Okay, like for example, that one's not available. So I'm just going to select the option to choose later. And then I can change that free subdomain name, that .webstarts.com address later on if I want. Okay, I've now signed up for a webstarts.com account so I can check my email and there are some instructions in there that will help me get started. And there's also a video that appears here in this modal. You can watch this video and it'll walk you through getting started with your very own online store. I'm going to close that out for now. And that brings me to the dashboard view for the website that I just created in my webstarts account. And up here, I can choose to create another website in my WebStarts account. I have a thumbnail to the website. 
And then down here, I have all the different applications that I can activate to work along with this Web Starts website. All right, if I want to edit the web address, I can do that at any time by clicking edit right there. That's just allowing us to change that free.webstarts.com domain name that we were uh, working with in the last step. All right, if I want to edit the pages of this website, I'm just going to click edit site. And then that's going to bring up what's called the Web Starts page editor. The Web Starts page editor is drag and drop. That means that you can click to select the elements and then just drag and drop them wherever you would like them to appear on the page. You can remove the elements just by clicking on the red X right there. You can undo and redo with the undo and redo arrows. And then you can edit the contents of elements by double clicking on them. So for example, I could change just what's displayed in this text box. All right, if you wanna add new elements to your page, you can just click here to add new elements, like for example, text or images or context boxes, or let's say for example, a button, and then you can uh, make whatever changes you want to a specific element by clicking on the style brush that's attached to it, and then customizing the style. So you can do things like change the color all right, I'm just going to remove that for now. One thing to keep in mind when working with elements is that they're on top of each other. That means that each element is in its own layer. And also another thing to keep in mind is that each of the Web Starts pages is divided into three main sections. The top section is called the header. That's the section that I just clicked that's highlighted in green. Anything that's dragged into the header appears in that same location at the top of each page. And anything that's dragged into the bottom down here appears at the bottom of each page, and we call that the footer. The body is the main section that you'll be working in and changing your content in. Now, when you are working with the way that the pages are displayed, you'll be working in the editor. But to create the actual products that you need for your online store, you'll be working within the store application that can be found either by clicking it here on the sidebar or returning back to the dashboard, just like what I'm gonna do here, and then clicking on the store application. When you click on the store application, it's going to open up the manage store modal. That's where you're going to see the things like the place to create your first product, that kind of thing. And when you do click on it, it will enable that store application and it will also set you up with a WePay account so that you can begin accepting credit card payments. The cost to accept those credit card payments online is approximately 2.9%, which is fairly competitive across the board, regardless of which service you use. The service is available in the United States and Canada. If you're in another country, you may have to use a different payment provider. For example, Stripe is a good option that we also provide, but it's not automatically set up in the background. And of course, you can choose to enable PayPal and that sort of thing. And I'll show you where you can set that up in just a moment. All right. So once you've automatically been signed up for that WePay account, you'll get an email address. You want to click on the confirm button that appears in that email. And then it will ask you for your banking information. And that's how WePay will know where to send the money that you collect when processing payments on your website. All right, so here I'm on the products tab. I want to create my first product. In order to do that, I just click add product. I'm going to give my product a title. I call it earrings. Then I'm going to just going to say handcrafted earrings. Of course, you can make your title and description as long or as short as you want. You can also mess with some of the styling options. For example, you can create links in your description you can do call outs and you can choose to make some of the text bold or italic. Under the separate tags with a comma or tags section, this would just be like where you would put keywords that people would use to find a specific product using the search function that will appear on your online store. Images, you can click here to add images of your product. 
I haven't uploaded any product images yet, so I'm going to upload them from my computer. Here I'm just going to select the images that I've chosen ahead of time. And like I said, it really helps to have high quality photos of the products that you're selling. So if you're selling jewelry, like for example, in this store, you want to have some high quality photos. And then you want to add multiple photos uh, to each of your products if you do have them. So maybe you could add one view and then you could have another view, uh, that kind of thing. I just have the one photo for now. You can also add a video. So if you want a video to demonstrate your product that you're selling, you can click here and you can upload a video or you can choose one from YouTube. And then that will appear when people are looking to uh, buy your product. All right, then finally, we're gonna enter in a price and then we're gonna select whether or not we want to collect taxes on that particular product. If you want to, you just check that box. I'm gonna leave it unchecked. Under this SEO or search engine friendly URL, I'm just gonna leave it saying earrings, but you would put earrings dash, you know, gold or gold dash earrings or whatever you want that would create a search engine friendly URL so that you're more likely to get found on search engines. So if you create your keywords and phrases separated by a dash in the URL, that's a good idea. Here we can create categories. So for example, I'm going to create a category called earrings. I can create as many categories as I'd like here just by adding additional keywords. So if I wanted one for necklaces, another for rings, I could do that. All right. I'm going to enable shipping. You can choose to just disable shipping. I'm going to say that this weighs one pound just because that's what it is. I can enter in the size of the packaging that I'm going to ship it in. The next option says hide product from catalog. You're going to want to hide a product from the catalog if you want to, let's say, for example, uh, send an email out with a special price that you would like people to respond to from the email, but you don't want the people who just stumble upon your store to find that special price in your product catalog. And if that's a strategy you want to deploy with your online store, then you would just enable that. I'm going to leave it disabled for now. Variants is another thing that you can use. Variants allow you to do things like sell the same item in different colors and sizes. So let's say, for example, you're selling a ring and you needed a specific ring size, then you would enter those ring sizes and separate them by a comma right here, something like that. You can add up to three variants. So you can have size, color, material, or you can customize whatever variant you want. Of course, you can delete those variants and you can set prices specific to the variant. So let's say, for example, you wanted to charge a little bit more for a specific color or size, you could do that. All right, I'm gonna disable variants because I'm not using it in this example. Inventory management, this is just helpful if you only have a certain amount of product available for sale and you don't want to accidentally get somebody to make a purchase for an item that you don't have in stock or can't get anymore, then you might want to use inventory management. You're not required to use inventory management, of course. You can also do things like enable to display stock on hand. That might be an incentive for somebody to make a purchase if they feel like there's only a limited number available for purchase. And then you can check this box or uncheck it if you want to allow purchase of out of stock items or not. Again, inventory management, not something I'm going to use. Digital delivery, this is just if you're selling something that's a digital product that doesn't apply to a jewelry store necessarily because we're selling physical products. But if I was selling an ebook or a software or maybe photographs or some other file and I wanted to make it for download, I would choose the deliver digital delivery option. Once you're ready to create that product, just click create and it's going to add that new product. Okay, so now I have the product and I can view what that looks like on my live website by clicking the view icon. And then this is the page where that product is displayed. And I'll show you where you can go to customize this in just a moment. All right, so you're going to go through here and you're going to add multiple products. So all of the different products that you want to sell, you would just add. So I'm just going to say ring say silver ring. Of course, your descriptions are going to want to be better than mine, but I'm just doing this for a demo. So I don't want to um, 
spend too much time focusing on things like the product title and description. Uh, here you can see I want to collect some shipping there. And I'm going to create a second product. And then I'm going to create a third product. I'm going to go ahead and create another ring. I'm going to go diamond ring. I'm going to add the image for the ring. So I guess that's like a diamond sapphire ring. I don't know. It just it's $150. I come down here. Oh, I'm going to assign it to my category as well. I didn't do that with the last item, but that's something that you would do is just assign your product to a specific category if you're going to use categories, which you're not required to use either. Most of this is actually quite optional. And once you do have your categories, you'll click on the categories tab, and then you can rearrange these categories if you want them to pick them, to display them in a different order. And you can also edit the categories, and you can even... Uh, create subcategories for each parent category here. I'm not gonna get into all that. Once you begin receiving orders, you can check your orders tab to find uh, out the name of the person who placed the order, what they purchased, their shipping address, that kind of thing. You'll also receive a notification. Do keep in mind that those details are available with the paid plan if you're using the free plan. Then you'll have limited access to some of the shipping information you can get it from the payment processor in various places, but that's one of the paid subscription features. Reports, that just tells you what you sold on what date, so you can run some sales reports. Coupons, that's great if you're doing a promotion. You can add a coupon. You can do that by either percent, or you can do a free shipping coupon. You can have those coupons expire, or you can limit the number of uses. There's a lot of options there. Customers, this is where you have your customer database. You can add a customer manually, or your customers will be added when they create an online store. One of the nice things about WebStart's store is that it has returning customer login. So the people who shop at your store can save their email address and password, log in, and then their credit card and shipping information is stored from their previous shopping experience. And then you can even edit that in the back end on their behalf. So let's say, for example, they wanted to update a password or they wanted to... Uh, change certain information about them, and you took a phone call, you could do that by managing your customers in the back. Shipping has its own little video tutorial because shipping options can be a little bit complex. It just depends on how far you want to take it. Uh, by default, we set you up with domestic and rest of world shipping options. That way you can set up how you would like to send your products in the United States uh, versus the rest of the world because, of course, shipping from the United States to the United States is going to be less expensive than shipping, let's say, from the United States to Japan or something like that. Uh, you can set up all your different shipping options, including whether you want to ship free, flat rate, by weight, by price, by quantity, whether you want to use a UPS or USPS calculator. You can watch the shipping video to get into that more specifically and find out exactly what you want to uh, do for shipping. Taxes, same thing. You just add a tax rule. You select whether you're adding it by your country or by a state, that kind of thing. Uh, you do that right here, and then you enter your tax rate as well. Under the settings tab is where we'll talk about your payment options over here you have the payment section it has we pay selected by default but you can also use stripe authorized.net if you select those options you'll have to enter in the appropriate stripe and authorized.net credentials if you want to accept paypal you'll check the accept paypal option and then you'll enter your paypal email address so make sure that that's correct Another important thing to draw your attention to is that you can place your store in test mode or live mode. If you place it in test mode, you'll be able to run a test transaction to make sure everything's working well. If you do that, you're going to use a card number like 424242, 424242. Well, it's, you do 42, a total of 16 digits, and then you can just put in any expiration date that's not expired and any three-digit card security code and it will allow that test transaction to go through. 
Do keep in mind, if you forget to put a pack in live mode and you start processing real live transactions while you're in test mode, you're not actually receiving money for those transactions. So that's not going to be good. Make sure that you switch back into live mode before you begin accepting payments for real orders. Under store name, this is where you're going to enter your, your store name. So if I was doing a jewelry store and I wanted to have a specific name, I'd enter it here. And then you can enter your store email address there as well, your phone number, and then even upload a logo. That logo will appear on the checkout page. All right. You can also do your time zone and you can select whether you're using the imperial or metric measurement system. When you're ready, you can just click update for any one of these things, whether it's payment, uh, processing options, or the store settings themselves. All right, so let's go back to look at how we can edit the actual store pages themselves. I'm going to close out of the Manage Store modal. I'm going to go back into the Edit Site mode. I can select the various pages I want to edit from my website up here in the top left. Here you can see I have an About page, Contact, and Home page. And then I have this heading that says Store Pages. Now, these are the store pages of my website, and I can select them and edit the way that they're displayed. So I'm going to select the store page for starters. Now the store page in this particular template has a few things enabled. For example, the search, the sort by option, the categories, they're all enabled. I can enable or disable them by selecting the store widget, clicking on the store cog icon, and then selecting down here whether I want to show product search or show sorting options, that kind of thing. Okay, some of the other options that I have that I can choose from are I can select the number of products that are displayed uh, in uh, rows and columns. So by adjusting those, it'll change the total number of columns that are displayed. So if I had, let's say, if I limited that to two, then I have two columns. If I have one column, then it's limiting the products to one and it's creating the pagination button on the bottom. The same thing with rows, I can add multiple rows or I can just show things in a single row. And then under scaling, I can either crop or fit. You can see that just changes the way that the images to my products are displayed. And then I can change the aspect ratio as well. I currently have it to one-to-one. -to -one. That means basically it's set for a square image, which is great. If you have kind of a squatty image, then you would select widest. And if you had kind of a tall image, then you would select the tallest option but by default, it's set to one to one ratio. On the sidebar, I can select whether I want it to be a drop down menu or whether I want it to be um, a sidebar. That's actually for categories, I'm sorry, or whether I don't want the categories to be displayed at all. So if I didn't want any of this to appear over here, I could simply remove it. I like the drop down option or the uh, sidebar option. Excuse me. Okay. And then let's take a look at another one of the pages. I can just save if I'm happy with the way that looks. You can also add elements to these page, just pages. Just keep in mind um, that that can be a little bit tricky. They're kind of laid out to work well the way they are. Now, if I go into the product specific page, once again, I can select the widget and then I can choose whether or not to show certain things. So here I'm showing the sidebar checkout. Um, let me show you how that works. If it's selected, then what happens is when somebody clicks add cart, so I'm going to save that, show you what that looks like. Somebody, if somebody goes to the store and they select a product, say for example, like this, and they click add cart and I have that sidebar checkout selected, then this sidebar slides out and then they can view their cart and add that item to their cart. Otherwise, it's just added to their cart and then they continue shopping. And then when they click checkout, that's when they'll see the, what's included in their cart. All right, what are some of the other options? There's a login page. This is the page where they can sign up, create an account. They can also log back in if they saved their shipping and their credit card credentials. The cart page or the cart view is just the view uh, when they're looking to see what's in their cart. Once again, here you can select the widget and then select which options you want to be displayed. Um, under the account page, that's the page that's displayed while they're logged in. So if they saved their shipping and their billing information and they're logged into their account, this is the page that's displayed and you can choose to 
uh, play with what's displayed on that page as well. All right, well, that is pretty much it. There are a ton of other features of Web Starts that will help support your online jewelry store. For example, you can create a blog post and that helps with the marketing. You can create those supporting pages. So for example, a good contact page with a contact form where people can reach you and your phone number, and your address, that kind of stuff. An about page that tells a little bit about uh, your business, what might inspire or drive you to do what you do and uh, the types of things that that make your company uh, different than the competitors. You might want to include all of that on that page. And uh, once you're ready, you're going to want to go ahead and add your domain name. This would be your top level domain name. And in order to do that, you'll first have to upgrade to a paid subscription. You'll just enter your domain name that you'd like in here. Click search if it's available you'll upgrade to a paid plan and it will automatically begin working with your online jewelry store. Uh, the store does work on both mobile phones and on desktops. So that's great. Uh, you can manage your subscription up here in the top right. And that's really about it. You can contact us at support at webstarts.com if you ever have any questions or need any further assistance. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to visit webstarts.com to see other videos like this. And of course, sign up to create your very own free online store. See you next time.